Hi, this is the Monday evening, October 26th update on Hurricane Zeta. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the best information for where you are. As mentioned here, this is a hurricane now, Hurricane Zeta approaching the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, and this is a much more organized storm than we had yesterday. As we discussed in last night's video, uh, conditions are allowing this to become a better stacked cyclone, and that has led to some intensification today. If we take a closer look on the visible satellite imagery here, you'll see that the center of circulation is no longer exposed and is now located beneath the deep thunderstorms, which are exploding upward here. Uh, near the region I've circled, and you can kind of get a sense that there's some deep convection curling around this location right here, and that's likely where the surface center is at this time. So no longer as sheared as it was. There is still a little bit of shear out of the north, but it is lighter than it was even earlier this morning when the center of circulation was still exposed. And this relocation of the center, well, not really relocation, but this building of thunderstorms over top of the center has led to a strengthening uh, cyclone during the day. And if we look at the recon plane that just entered the storm, it went through and found a pressure down at about 984 millibars. That's actually closer to 983, uh, given the full data set. And it found uh, strong winds on the north side. The earlier plane, which was flying lower down, found max winds on the east side of about 80 miles per hour at the surface. And those winds could still increase just a little bit before landfall within the next several hours. Uh, the plane did see that the mid-level center is located down here. Now on the satellite picture I just showed you, it was a little bit farther north where the cloud tops were curling. So that indicates there might still be just a little bit of a southward or south-southeastward vortex tilt consistent with that northerly shear pushing on it. But like I said, it's less tilted than it was earlier in the day. And so this has led to some strengthening, making this now a hurricane. And it is generally moving toward the island of Cozumel and landfall near there. Perhaps the southern part of the island is expected later tonight. The sun's about to set and hurricane warnings are up for this portion of northeastern Mexico and winds as high as 80 miles per hour or even a smidge higher could, occur, could occur near the coastline. And of course, flash flooding and storm surge possible concerns as this continues northwestward. This would be the third hit in a very short period of time here late in the season for this region of Mexico. So certainly a nasty hurricane season going on there this year. If we look at the water vapor satellite imagery, uh, we're going to not see Zeta down here yet on your screen, but I want to show you the bigger picture of how this is going to be steered after it moves across the Yucatan Peninsula. We can see that the large upper trough over the southwestern U.S. is beginning to dig in, and this is going to close off into a big bowling ball shaped low that just cruises across Texas in a couple of days, and that will cause this to start turning toward the right. And uh, the reason it's going to be moving north here is because we do have this clockwise rotating area of high pressure near Florida now. Kind of hard to see here on the water vapor, but you might get a semblance that these clouds right in here kind of rotating clockwise. So we have a high centered somewhere around Florida in the mid-levels. And this is inducing a southeasterly steering flow that is now going to push Zeta up into the Gulf of Mexico. Again, it's currently down off the southern edge of your screen. This is going to come up and then round that ridge and move and turn generally clockwise as it approaches the U.S. Gulf Coast, aided by the fact that this bowling ball low is coming in, generating some southwesterly flow on its southeastern flank, helping to push this off toward the right. So it will be turning as it nears the coast. You can see there is some dry air over the Gulf right now, but not really getting pushed into the storm because it waited for about an extra day uh, compared to earlier expectations a few days ago. And this is allowing the dry air to be less of an issue, but the storm won't be without obstacles as it crosses the Gulf. If we look at the GFS upper level flow here, 200 millibars, this is for Tuesday afternoon. So this is going to take about 12 hours perhaps over land to cross over the Yucatan Peninsula, emerging on the north side somewhere near this location by Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon. And of course, the storm will weaken a bit as it crosses over land. And once it reemerges over water, after perhaps a half a day, we'll start to see it reintensify again. And during this time, uh, this is not a prohibitively hostile environment. We have generally light southeasterly flow aloft. Different from today, this is actually going to be lighter shear than it has now. So shear will be generally favorable after this emerges off of the coast of Mexico. And for the ensuing 18 to 24 hours, it may have a chance to strengthen healthily 
on its journey toward the northwest and then toward the north. And so once it gets into the central gulf here, you can see the wind is light out of the south. And after this point, about Wednesday morning, shear will start to pick up tremendously as this big upper low over New Mexico starts to move into Texas and we get this big southwesterly flow, which as I mentioned yesterday, extends very deep. Uh, from the top of the troposphere down into the mid-levels of the troposphere. And so as this approaches the coast of what is currently expected to be Louisiana, there is going to be some shear here. And exactly how much uh, zeta is affected by that shear depends a lot on the timing as the shear is moving in at the same time that the storm is approaching landfall. So if the shear arrives a few hours earlier or a few hours later, it could change uh, the timeline of when zeta begins to, to weaken in response to the shear. In addition, just like we had with uh, Delta, we have cooling water near the coast of Louisiana. The water down here is quite warm, whereas the shelf water out to a couple hundred miles offshore is a bit cooler. So these factors are going to combine to uh, keep Zeta in check as it nears the coastline of the Gulf Coast. And we aren't expecting a strengthening storm at landfall at this time. And we're not expecting a particularly strong storm, but it could be a hurricane uh, despite that. And right now NHC is expecting maximum winds of about 75 miles per hour at the time of landfall. What's a reasonable range here, uh, given the fact that we could have a little bit of a little bit less shear, a little bit more shear, dry air intrusion, things like that. A reasonable range here might be 60 to 90 mile per hour winds, I would posit. That's just my personal opinion at the time of landfall. So basically, you're just preparing for a hurricane here. It's not a major, but it can still cause tremendous problems uh, given the uh, the vulnerability of this section of coastline to storm surge, flooding, and uh, the wind can still be a problem for power outages, etc. So we do have a hurricane watch here for southeastern Louisiana and Mississippi going to the western coast of Alabama. And it's important to note here that uh, the track is, is pretty confident here on this turn into what is expected to be southeastern Louisiana. Again, there is a fudge factor left or right. If you're living in somewhere like Mobile, Alabama, keep in mind that the storm will be turning toward the northeast as it makes that landfall. And so that means that even if the storm makes a landfall somewhere here, if it's moving northeastward, it doesn't take very much track error for this to move directly over southern Alabama or the western Florida panhandle because if it's making a track like this even if it makes landfall in Louisiana just a little shift to the right gets you to those two states so Alabama western Florida uh, stay on your guard here tropical storm watches are up for that section of coastline so if we see a little shift to the east uh, worse conditions will ensue in this portion of coastline and of course, uh, Mississippi is right in the thick of the forecast track right now, as is New Orleans and the Mississippi River Delta. And it's possible that uh, adverse conditions get as far west as the area south of Lafayette or Lafayette, Louisiana. We're not really expecting a significant chance of a track that does this, for example, into the Lake Charles region where both Delta and Laura made landfall uh, during the last month or two. Uh, this is going to turn as it encounters that really strong bowling ball low over Texas. This really uh, provides a steering flow that forces this off to the northeast. So we are expecting that turn, and right now it's a pretty confident forecast that this goes somewhere into eastern Louisiana, at least at first, and then inland into places like Mississippi, Alabama, possibly Florida, and then beyond into uh, uh, deeper into the southeastern U.S., bringing potential for rainfall impacts. Uh, we do have a hurricane warning right now in the Yucatan Peninsula, where again, hurricane conditions are expected tonight. Landfall will occur within the next several hours. And this whole area getting lambasted by a third hurricane within the last month or so. Crazy hurricane season we have going on as we continue marching through the Greek alphabet. That's it for now, everyone. Stay safe, get prepared, and stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.